Welcome to Hockey Night in New York, where Islanders hockey always reigns supreme. Whether you were raised at the barn in Uniondale or born in the stable at Belmont, Hockey Night in New York is your home for all things Isles. Now, let's drop the puck and get this party started. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Hockey Night in New York. Welcome to the program, everyone. It is January 28th, Sunday, 2024. Coming to you live from Floored Media in Rockville Center. Got another awesome show coming up for you tonight. Peter Baugh of The Athletic will be joining us. New to the Islanders and Rangers beat over there at The Athletic. Looking forward to talking about him. Big show coming up with me as always, Mr. Stefan Rosner. My name is Sean Cuthbert. Stefan Rosner... How are you? I am fantastic, to use Always your word. Fantastic. Did you get a haircut? No, nah, man, I just, I'm just not wearing a hat, bro. Oh, okay, yeah. my bad. Yeah, sorry. It looks good, though. Thanks, man. Appreciate right. that. Cool, cool. So, thanks for joining the program here tonight at twitch.tv slash ny and Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and everywhere else. Before we dive in, want to tell you all about our sponsors, starting with Blue Line Deli and Bagels. Satisfy your hunger at 719 West Jericho Turnpike in Huntington and 217 Carlton Avenue in East Islip. Check out the menu at bluelinedeli.com. Also proud to be sponsored by Main Street Board Game Cafe. Find your crowd and unplug your game at 307 Main Street in Huntington Village. Also happy to be sponsored by Razor and Kniff Attorneys at Law, ready to fight for you. Check them out at RazorAndKniff.com. That's R-A-I-S-E-R-A-N-D-K-E-N-N-I-F-F.com for a free consultation. And also proud to be sponsored by A1 VIP Entertainment, your one-stop entertainment concierge for sports, concerts, Broadway, and more. One call does it all at 516-787-0048. And of course, folks, we're going to get into questions brewing later in the show where we will answer your questions. Don't forget, questions brewing at the top of your chat, and then your question, we'll get to it later. So check it out. Later on, Stefan Rosner, let's talk about the Islanders. We don't have much to talk about. Nothing no, happened. No, not much this, happened. Uh, this past week was really, really a, a dull well, one. Yeah, yeah, we might as well just wrap it up now. <laughs> yeah, so Patrick Waugh, he, uh, he got his start, first four games. Let's just dive right into that. Let's talk about the fact that he has finally officially started his, his uh, reign here behind the bench. What have you seen from him so far? And then we'll dive in more specifically to the games. Let's start with the first morning skate under Wild. Yeah, let's do it. It was like nothing I'd ever seen again. We're going from Lambert, different style, not to knock anything Lambert did, but I said it a lot. Lula Merlo wanted fire, and he bought a goddamn flamethrower. Oh, it's a I GD mean, flamethrower now. Flame, what? <laughs> I said it's a GD flamethrower yeah, now. Yeah, goddamn okay. flamethrower. Wow. I mean, okay. this was like a... Um, um, army, an army, and the drill sergeant's getting his troops ready for war. These guys were like puppies that were being trained and then sprinting to the bench, sprinting to the middle, stopping, starting, stopping, starting, and they listened to everything. It was quiet. They were asking questions. I mean, it was the control Wah had because of the passion right off the bat was literally like something I've never seen before. And talking to the players, they loved every second of it. And you saw it. Again, the emotion for Wah being back as an NHL coach after a couple of years away. The players needed a, a kick in the ass, essentially. And that's they why, did. That's why Lou brought Wah in. And you wondered, okay, how would the players respond? They bought into everything that Wah was selling. Very good salesperson. Everyone should take <laughs> notes if you're, you're in sales. Sure. But it was just, again, you have games you have to play. No one should have expected any of the structural things or anything like that to really change in just a 30-minute skate. But... Again, the ability to see the way that he got this group. He, he owes none of these guys anything. He went in there, treated Adam Pelik. Remember, he grabbed Pelik by the head for motivational <laughs> yeah. talk. He stopped Romanov. It didn't matter if he were a 10-year right. vet or a 10-day vet like Kyle McLean. Mm -hmm. He wants things done a certain way, and he's not going to stop doing that, stopping everything, unless he sees the perfect play. And I think that is huge for a team where there are a bit of laziness at times, mm -hmm. some lackluster performances. He's not going to tolerate that at all. It has been night and day yep. between Lane Lambert and Patrick Waugh, and it probably is that breath of fresh air that this team needed. And, you know, just from seeing his press conferences, I mean, I wouldn't say he's similar to Barry Trotz, but he certainly nears the outspokenness that Barry Trotz has. I think Patrick obviously has a very different energy, but it's an enthusiasm. You know, you can just tell how much... He loves the game. It really comes out in the way he's talking about it, right? Not just not just being the coach, not just talking about what happened on the ice, but you can hear like that love for what's happening on the ice. And he almost loves to just talk about it and explain it. And he's not shy about telling you, you know, what he saw out there, what he wants to improve, and, and everybody knows just watching Lane Lambert. I mean, he wouldn't give you anything, you know? Yeah, we played. It was <laughs> we, just, we did hockey. It you was know what I mean? Yeah, it was accountability. And I think a lot of it has to do with he's the first outside voice since twenty eighteen. And the first yeah. day over his first press conference, he goes, 
the honors are last in this category. They're last. We're terrible mm-hmm. at this. We're terrible right. at that. Right. And that put the accountability, not just on the players, but his new assistant coaches, the organization as a whole, that, hey, you know, the truth hurts, but we suck at this. So immediately talking to the players afterwards, a lot of these players now you're hearing from this, again, not that they weren't accountable before, but now it's out there. Mm-hmm. And now the players have been more vocal about how we were bad at this. When if Lean was still on here, that's not the conversation. And again, I think that's why in practice they've been so in the zone with fixing everything. I mean, morning skate before the last game, they under Lean they ran line rushes. Probably each line would go three times. That was it. They do power by penalty kill. Mm-hmm. The not, top line, the Lee uh, Horvat Barzal line, ran line rushes five times. He stopped them the first four times because people were off by an inch, or the breakout wasn't perfect. Finally, he said perfect. Fist bumps Anders Lee and then goes, you're running it again. And they didn't move on. They did line rushes for about 30 minutes, did breakouts for about 10 minutes, and that was it. And again, you need you don't need as much practice time now. Mm-hmm. And Wah needs to really drill home what he has to drill home. But the attention to detail from Wah, they're gonna once they get this system down pat, this team is gonna be really tough to play because again, you're getting back to those little details that they did so well in their trots that they failed miserably at under Lane. And that's look at all these games, and we'll get into it. Turnovers killed them. And if they just get rid of right. these turnovers or just lessen them, they're winning all these games. Yeah, the only concern there, I guess, is these turnovers were also happening under Lee yep. Lambert. Yep. So are the undisciplined penalties. If anything has, you know, negative that's kind of remained since the takeover, it's that stuff right there. And he's been acknowledging it, as you said. And that's the onus is going to be on him to to help remove that. The players got to do it themselves. They're the ones out there making these decisions, right? Whether it's a decision to pass the puck here, chip it up the boards, uh, get their stick up on a man, or just, you know, grind through a play and not, you know, not take a penalty, right? I mean, he can only do so much as a, as a mentor, as a guy telling them in practice or on the bench, like, hey, keep your sticks down. But it's up to them to actually do it. So Waz got to try to figure out a way to weave some magic in that regard to get these guys to just focus on that stuff, remember it while they're out on the ice, because obviously Lane Lambert failed at that. And, you know, he Patrick's already kind of been giving us an update on that. Like, our turnovers have gone yeah. down, right? 17, then 14, then 14, then 10. So they're, they're, they're trending in the right direction, but it's got to keep going it's a that trend. way. I mean, four games, trend? sure. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Oh, yeah. That was a knock. Well, yeah, I, I know where you're going. Oh, good, Don't good, worry. Good. <laughs> so, you know, that's got to keep going that way. Um, and they just got to find a way to stay out of the box. And, and hopefully you couple that with the promising look on just how they're playing the game right now. And then all of a sudden you, you might have a team that's going to win some hockey games because their shots on goal are up. They're actually out shooting teams over these, these Three last the four, four games. Three of the four games have uh, the possession numbers have been great. They've been spending a lot more time in the other zone. Uh, the funny thing is they're getting more shots and chances, but now they're not getting the finish. So that has to come back too. Again, that's more on the players, but it's a good sign. So, you know, maybe people got a little restless or, or upset that they had a rough week, one, two, and one. It's obviously not a week that's going to get this team back into the playoffs. But the good thing is the underlying stuff is there where you're seeing things trend in a positive direction, trend. And if they can clean up the the rough stuff that's kind of keeping them you know, either off the scoreboard or in the box. Cause, cause there has been just these plays now because these games have been so tight, yeah. all one goal games, like these mistakes have been magnified because you're literally at the edge of your seat waiting for that next moment to either be a goal for, or a, or a goal against. And you've had these plays that burn them. I mean, I look at the game against Florida where they get their go ahead goal on a penalty where Sammy Boldu comes across the ice to challenge the player. I don't know if he, he tripped, he lost his footing, but he goes into challenge. He didn't hit the guy. What's that? He failed to hit the guy. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a rough it was a rough moment for yeah. Boldu, but he ends up falling down on the play. Then he, I don't know if he inadvertently or he went for the trip. If he went for the trip, that's on him, but his stick gets in between the skates. Panthers go on the power play, goal against, and then the, the Islanders are essentially lucky to tie the game and at least get a point. But I guess we can rewind and dive in, starting with the, the Dallas game. But to, to wrap up that point, I think there are a lot of good things to take away from what we've seen this week so far, but... That's only going to go so far if we don't see any, re- any results, right? So hopefully they take this break, they reset, they come back, and that's when we start seeing points going up on the board. So let's I, start with Dallas. Yeah, so I thought Dallas was actually their worst performance of the week. Sure. Um, again, the, the Which first, makes sense. Again, it makes sense. There yeah. wasn't any systematic changes. The mm-hmm. first five minutes they allow two-on-ones, three-on-ones, whatever the case may yeah, be. Yeah. But again, what we saw, what we saw a lot of this week was a resiliency. That was missing lately under Lean. Yep. The Islanders come back to force Omer time. Hudson fashion, I think, five minutes into the third period. Point shot to flex off him and in. Then you get to overtime. I mean, again, this was a game where penalties were another issue. The turnovers, you know, 17 turnovers. Mm-hmm. 
a lot of shots against. I think it was 41 or 42, whatever it was. And they didn't look great. They looked like the same team under Lane. That being said, going into the third period trailing, I asked a lot of players, you know, what was the message? And they said, he said, we're a resilient bunch. Just go prove it. Go do it. Right. Calm demeanor. Right. He's been, if you've watched his pressers, he's actually more positive than I thought he was going to be after some of these losses, just because he's such a hard, energized coach. I think the positivity, not that he's coddling them, but he, he knows, right. he deals with kids when he was in Quebec coaching them. Mm-hmm. And he's brought pretty much everything he's done there here. He's treating sure. them like they're, they're young guys. And a lot of them are young. But I think you saw the message going into the third. A lot of them to not think, oh, we're going to we're gonna lose again. Mm-hmm. We kept the positive. Mm-hmm. Then it goes to overtime. And you again, we've talked about a lot where your big-time players have to make big-time plays. Mm-hmm. Barzal strips the puck in the D zone. Horvat, again, his IQ does not get enough credit where he's using his stick to say, off the boards, off the boards. His finish is beautiful. You see the emotions. They all talked after yeah. that. You know, it wasn't just about getting Wado in. We're snapping a losing skid. And again, mm-hmm. you wanted to see them build on that performance, which I thought they ultimately did. And we'll get to yeah. Vegas in a second. Yeah. But I thought, again, for them not doing really any systematic changes to find a way to win that game due to effort and resiliency, that was the first step in the bringing Wa on. Get them back to being in that group, and I thought they did that. Right, and it's funny how the loser point feels so much better <laughs> when you're coming back, you're tying the game, and then you're taking them. I mean, they got the, the winner point yeah, as well, yeah. but they earn the loser point, and then they get the second one. They earn the winning point as, as well. But it's such a it's a different feeling when they're the ones coming back and not the ones uh, you know giving the uh, the late leads up, right? But yeah, good start. Even though uh, things were still a little shaky out there with the turnovers and stuff like that, but a good start to get that win, get it right off your chest for for Patrick Wah, and now we'll go over to Vegas, a three two loss, but a much better game played by this team. Uh, but it seemed like giveaways were what uh, did them in in this one. And I thought this was their best performance of the week. Mm. I mean they. From the moment the puck dropped, it reminded me of Trot's hockey. Relentless on the forecheck, suffocating in the neutral zone. They didn't allow much, but again, turnovers, mm-hmm. penalties that um, Defoyev, I think that's how you pronounce the rookie, sure. that goal that Sorokin allows where his pads all the way out, that's that's a mm-hmm. bad goal. Right. To give up at that moment in time, and they ultimately lose in regulation. But again, th- they showed that dominance that we have not seen from this group a lot this year against a very good Vegas team. And you looked at the positives again. They were getting a, hot, a lot of shots. Aiden Hill stood on his head. There were for, certainly spots where they could have buried. Um, they fell to the penalty kill. It is it is what it is. I just thought the relentless effort is something that this group, when they're going, that's the first thing they do is get it on the forecheck. And I loved, I loved their game. I mean, you look at the advanced stats. I think they um, advanced stats said they should have had 6.25 goals in that game. Um, it was just a very impressive performance. Again, building off it, but that's how hockey works. And why after the game goes, we probably didn't deserve to win the game against Dallas. We deserve to win this one. Right. We don't. That's hockey. But again, we talk about progression, right? Yeah. Turnovers bound slightly, 17 to 14. Um, and again, that four check was just so important to me because when the team's going, they could run four lines and really get in on that. And I thought from the opening shift, they did that. Well, we're going to have to cut this week recap in half because we got a break for Peter. Yeah. So, folks, want to thank you all for tuning in to twitch.tv slash Hockey Night NY. Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, all over the place. Really appreciate that. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Peter Bois of The Athletic will be joining us. I don't want to hear it. It's over. I can't believe they fell short again. Yeah, but they played so well. They made it to the semifinals two years in a row. The semifinals aren't the cup. God damn it, heat was lightning. They'll get another shot at it next year. I don't even want to talk about it anymore, all right? They lost, okay? Let me just sit here and enjoy the one thing that makes me a little bit happy. This fresh, delicious, tasty, meaty, turkey-filled blue line combo. I eat three every day to help keep me strong. Hey, Donnie, can I have one of those? Coming right up. Talk about a blast from the Blue Line. Blue Line Deli and Bagels. Our goal is to make you a hero. Attention all artists, storytellers, and creators of all kinds. It's time to make your content stand out above the rest. And Floored Media is the place to make your visions become a reality. Maybe you want to elevate your podcast and add some video. Or turn that novel you wrote into an audiobook. Or maybe you just need the right space to produce your daily vlog. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or just starting out, Floored Media has the professional facilities, exceptional staff, and intimate atmosphere to breathe life into your creative passions at every step of the process. Thanks for giving some time to our sponsors. Ready to talk more aisles? 
The train rolls on right here on Hockey Night in New York. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The train rolls on here at Hockey Night in New York. And joining us right now is Peter Bois from The Athletic, brand new to the New York metro area covering the Rangers and the Islanders. Peter, thank you so much for giving us some time tonight. How you doing? I'm well. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Peter, why don't uh, we take this moment to start here to just introduce yourself to the beat, let everybody know where you're coming from over in Colorado, uh, maybe how you got into hockey, how you got into covering hockey, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, so I'm from uh, St. Louis, Missouri originally, and was was not covering hockey to start my career. I actually started by covering the University of Missouri football team, um, and then applied for a job. I was at the athletic and applied for another job at the athletic covering the, the avalanche out in Colorado. And that really kind of, I guess, started off my, my hockey career. And it's, it's been a blast. I was out in Denver for three years, absolutely loved it. And then had uh, the chance to hop on over here to cover the kind of the New York metro area teams and do some national features. And um, yeah, it's been a, been a fun start. Obviously I've only, only been out here a few weeks, but I've loved it so far. That's great. So now that you've made it over, you've got to see the hockey scene over here covering these teams. Maybe you can just give us your first impressions of the Islanders and obviously your first impressions of Patrick Watt taking over for the team. Yeah, it's funny. The um, So we have Arthur Staple who does an awesome job, and he had done some Isles stuff in the, the previous weeks as I was kind of getting settled. But my first day actually going out on the, onto the island to, to get to, to report was, was Watt's first day, which was obviously a lot of activity there was all the french canadian media had come right. down from i think they were some had come down from montreal some were in boston for the canadians road game um but yeah it's a really fascinating dynamic i had obviously know a lot of the players who who played under wa in colorado and so it was it was kind of funny when all of a sudden it was a classic lou lamorello you didn't know this was coming. Maybe you thought a coaching change was coming, but there was no indication that Patrick Waugh was, was going to be suddenly taking the Islanders job. And then all of a sudden he was, and it was, um, I think the energy was pretty apparent from his first skate of, um, just very instructive, very loud whistling a lot. And he doesn't use a physical whistle. He's just whistling with his, right. his mouth. <laughs> and, uh, I can't he, he kind of in, he, he, he clearly has a way he likes doing things and he's not going to change that just because he's back in the NHL. He's going to kind of stay true to how he coaches. And Peter, we were in Montreal together and just, I guess if you could give your thoughts on just that arena when they started showing Wall on the board there. Oh, it was unbelievable. I mean, that crowd is just, it's one of the best crowds in the league. Obviously a ton of history there. Great, great hockey market. And yeah, it was that when they showed Patrick Waugh during the national anthem it was just I don't think I was I wasn't really looking at um, the jumbotron I just started hearing screams and then I looked up and they were showing the like highlight package and it was clear that it made Waugh a little uncomfortable um, he kind of he uh, it seemed like he didn't even want to acknowledge it at first eventually he kind of appeased the crowd and gave a, a half-hearted wave but it was it shows how if you're if you if you win in Montreal, you're going to be a legend for the rest of your life, and and he certainly won a lot there. Before we move on to more Wa and Islanders chats, Zach Parise just signed with the Colorado Avalanche. So I guess just take us through where you really think that he could be a, a great fit for that team. That's obviously he's joining them because he believes they could go on a Stanley Cup run. Yeah, I think that it's the Avalanche. So they they signed Thomas Tatar towards the end of the off season, hoping he could kind of give them a. a boost in the middle six and and score some goals and that signing just frankly didn't work out very well so they traded him to seattle and now uh zach Greasy is kind of filling in in that spot i imagine middle six wing maybe fourth line wing if they're fully healthy maybe can slide up to the second line if if um if they need him to but he's a guy who we know this coaches like veteran players who they can trust and zach Greasy is a guy with 1200 games of experience Maybe he's not the fastest skater in the world anymore, but he's someone who Jared Bednar is going to trust, I assume. And I think that's why they identified him as someone that they still wanted and who they still thought could help them. So he's someone who they, who, who can, I guess, provide stability. He can penalty kill and he can score some goals. He had 21 goals last year and the Avalanche, they have the top end talent. The question is kind of, can they fill in around those players um, with, with some depth pieces and Zach Creasy is, now someone that's a role that they don't need to now fill at the deadline. 
Right, yeah, and there's definitely some disappointed fans here on the island that were uh, kind of hoping, maybe even expecting him to come here to the island. I know I thought that was nearly a sure thing, and uh, but I don't blame the guy. You know, you got a one team that's uh, on the outside looking into the playoffs, and then you have another team that's that's pretty much locked in there, and, and obviously a cup contender. So Zach's gonna go chase himself a cup. I wish him the best of luck. But let's move on back to the New York Islanders. So we talked about Wah coming in. Now let's talk about the New York Islanders with Wah behind the bench. What did you see from these first four games? How did they? look out there and how has uh, Patrick Waugh's influence looked on the New York Islanders? Yeah, I mean, they're certainly playing with with effort. Like, I, I don't think that you can question the effort in any of the games that they've lost. In Montreal, they, they battled back. Um, they're still making a lot of, I would say, mistakes that aren't mistakes that the best teams in the league make. A lot of bad turnovers, costly turnovers, plays that are frankly, just like bad decisions leading to great A chances the other way. Um, and some of that I think is the roster more than coaching, just like the, this isn't a, a roster that's particularly deep on, on either uh, like the offense or, or defense. There's good players on both the decor and in the forwards. But I, I think that, that you're seeing some of the holes and, and I don't think that that's going to change overnight. Um, I think maybe with, with Wa they can, kind of create I know he's hoping to create some better habits and better structure and eliminate some of those those turnovers and loose defensive plays but that's going to take some time especially just given the kind of being realistic about the talent level that's on the roster and have you I mean obviously you've been in a couple of practice here the intensity have you ever seen anything like this yeah it certainly is uh, it's apparent like he he's really especially that first day like I think it was it was wanting to set a tone and um, and it's clear that he's he's going to do things his way. I had someone, his one of his assistant coaches um, from the Quebec Ramparts, where he's coaching in junior, said like he kind of was thinking out loud. And he's like, maybe he'll he'll now that he's he's in the NHL, maybe he'll change a little bit because he's working with older players. And then he was kind of like, actually, I I don't think so. Like this is Patrick Wall. He's going to do things his way. Um, and we'll see how it it kind of manifest itself long-term if the players like it long-term or if they get tired of it. But for now, it seems like they're responding to it. I, I don't think they've played perfect hockey since he's been there, but they've had a chance to win every game that they've, they've been in. Um, and it honestly just, it makes, it, it makes the Islanders a, a more exciting team from an outside perspective, which is like, I, I don't think can be the main like motivation and making a hiring, but it certainly is. It adds a level of excitement that I, I mean, I've only been in New York for a few weeks, so I can't, you, you two can speak to this a little more, but it it seems like there's more of a buzz around the Islanders than there was two weeks ago. No, there is no doubt a big buzz ever since he's been hired and it's still going on. We'll see how long it lasts. I'm curious how long the Montreal media keeps, uh, keeps coming down here to cover this guy, (laughs) but yeah, it's, it's, it's been fascinating to watch, but like you said, I mean, they're not, not just hiring this guy for the flair. They're hiring him because Lou Lamarillo thinks this guy is going to help this this team win hockey games and and hopefully that's the case for them but look you have a fresh perspective on this team coming in here uh who's impressed you so far on the ice and and maybe who stood out to you that could use a little work maybe somebody who struggled a little bit since you came to watch these games yeah i mean uh, noah dobson's like an obvious answer but he he's just so good i uh i i knew that he was a a good player when i came out to new york but like kind of watching him a little more frequently it's clear that this is a guy who's a a legit number one defenseman and those are really hard to find and the fact that the Islanders have have one who's young and they can uh, hopefully for them keep around for a long time is a huge advantage as an organization and then Barzal I think has played really well in the last like few games he's he's working really hard generating a lot of scoring chances his skating is beautiful to watch these are all things that we knew but it's kind of fun to see it on a more frequent basis in terms of uh, I guess things that need work I, I think it's I kind of uh, like mentioned this in the in the Montreal game, like, but it's some of the like the the bottom pair defensemen, whether it's Bolduc or Aho, like there's there's still some some mistakes there that you see. And then I think I think Engvall can be a good player. We've seen him be a good player in the past, but there are times where I think you look at the game winning goal against 
Montreal. Caulfield makes a nice play on it, and Angbell might have been able to create a chance going the other way if he hadn't turned it out. If if, <laughs> right. if Caulfield had forced the turnover, but you you see things like that, and it those are the little things that can cost you big time in hockey games. So those are kind of a few a few players I've maybe noticed in the less than ideal way, but it's it's I haven't. I haven't been able to watch a ton of games in person, but those are a few that stand out. Yeah, and in terms of goaltending, obviously you're going on for Georgiev, who really didn't have a backup this year to Sorokin and now Varlamov. I guess we'll start with Varlamov. Just the last couple of games, what did you see from him? Yeah, I think he's played pretty well, especially, I mean, you had to knock some rest off, I'd imagine, the first game and gave up, I think, three goals in the first period. But all of those were pretty dangerous. It wasn't like the, the... skaters in front of him did him any favors and then I thought he was pretty good last game and it's clear that Watt trusts him um, there's a lot of familiarity there if you look at Semyon Varlamov's 2014 numbers under Watt like that he was Ridiculous. unbelievable that year he I think finished second in Vesna, easily could have won was fourth in MVP voting and was a big reason that Watt won coach of the year like he stole a lot of games for the Avs and that Avs team overachieved in large part because of the goaltender um so it, it's clear there's a lot of trust there. I thought it was interesting that that Wa went back to him, went to him back to back days, kind of as soon as he was healthy. But I think his reasoning made sense of wanting to give Sorokin kind of even more time off. Um, and I think at at its best, that's a goalie tandem that can go up with any tandem in the league. Um, and that, but that will take Sorokin kind of get back, getting back to the level that he was at last year, where he, I, I think, was in contention for the Vesna and. Um, was one of the few best goalies in the league. For sure, Peter. And you talked about Noah Dobson before, obviously being a standout here. Maybe you can just give us a look at the rest of the defense, what you've seen out of them so far. And again, I know it's a small collection of games here that you've seen so far, but maybe just give us your thoughts on what you've seen so far and what they've done back there. Totally. I mean, it's it's tough losing Pelic the way they did. And, and I mean, just in terms of head injuries, those are scary and you hope he's okay. Um, I think that it's it's an interesting decor. Like, uh, Waz and complimentary of Romanov and um and then yeah Dobson's obviously the one they have leading the way I'm I'm curious when um when Pulak will be back kind of how how that looks because ideally you'll have both him and Pelic kind of giving giving big minutes to that decor but um Dobson is is obviously the one who stands out he's the one who's going to produce um offensively a lot but they do have some other guys that that you want to be able to count on and then I think it's kind of figuring out the, the bottom pair and like piecing together the, the rest of the decor and to get to a spot where if they're going to play important hockey games, you kind of have to be able to trust every person you put on the ice, especially defensemen. And I think that'll be key for the Islanders in the next, next little bit. Peter, no pressure prediction here, <laughs> but mm-hmm. do you think that the Islanders find a way to get in with Wah behind the bench here this season to the playoffs? It's interesting. Cause I, this is, I was looking at the standings last night and I don't have them up in front of me, but there's really like, there's like five or six teams kind of that are going to come. It's going to come down to two spots for five or six teams. I think Detroit makes it. Mm -hmm. And I think that one of, I think the last spot, I think Philly probably slides as the season goes. I think Washington slides. And then I, I really think that it's, it, it'll come down to either the Islanders or the Devils. Um, and, you know, I'll say for now, I'll say the Islanders, but if Jack Hughes comes back I'm, in the near future, I might, I might, uh, I, I reserve the right to change that prediction. <laughs> you do, you do reserve the right. Yeah, I guess that's a, and I, and I, there's also the Penguins, like it's hard to count out Crosby, but I, I just think that team, it's missing something somewhere in there. Um, but I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's, I think a lot of it honestly will come down to Sorokin, and if he plays the way they did, he did last year, then I think they will make the playoffs. Well, either way, it is going to be a grind. But Peter, welcome to New York. Welcome to the beat. Thanks so much for your time tonight, and really appreciate you hanging out with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. You got it, Peter. Thanks, Have a Peter. great rest of your night. All right, take care. You got it. All right, that was Peter Bois of the Athletic joining us here in New York, covering the New York Islanders. What did you think of his prediction, Stefan? I think it's interesting, like he said, because I was looking at the standings as well last night. <laughs> Where are you now? <laughs> the Islanders are five points back of a wa- second wild card spot, mm-hmm. but they're four points back of third in the Metro. So right. my mindset is if the Islanders are going to make the playoffs, 
it is not going to be a wild card spot because mm. they're going to have to win one of the three spots in the Metro because huh. Tampa's on a roll. Detroit's on a roll. I, again, if Tampa doesn't make it as a, a number three seed in their division, again, the Islanders, it might be it might be easier for them to Maybe win a third spot. Maybe we see five from the Atlantic this year? I, just the way it's going now. I mean, mm. I just look at the standings as I think Philly's going to fall out, mm-hmm. and that third spot is going to be up for grabs, and it's going to be easier to get in because the other team in the Atlantic aren't losing. There's a lot of teams in the Metro. The only team that's really hot in the Metro right now is Carolina. That's it. Right. So, right. again, we looked last year at the bad January, and we spoke about they were 4-8-3 and three last year in January, and everyone else failed in January. Right. And that's where the Islanders stood in it. The Islanders are 3-7-3 three, and three this January, and again, everyone's falling apart, and one team's doing it's well. It's so weird. February last year, the Islanders went 6-3-3 three and three and had a really good second half in mm-hmm. terms of points after the All-Star break. Now the question mark is, okay, we talked about how they couldn't mimic last year's January because I would kill them. Right. They did. Right. Narrative voice. They did exactly that. <laughs> sure. Now the question is, okay, Bad January last year, great February. Coming back from the break, wagging them to play the structure they need to play. Can they mimic their February from last year? Because if they do that, because Wa said after the press conference, we'll get back to the two games we didn't talk yes, about. Yes. But he goes, um, we're going to have to go on a run if we're going to make the playoffs. And the, when he said that, I said, oh, so you mean like just mimic your February from last year? Right. And um, so, yeah, I think we should dive in. You brought up the Pelican. We definitely need to dive into what happened in Montreal. So yes. uh, let's, let's do that. Yes, we'll pick it up there. So, yeah, Montreal, obviously uh, not a good start. Going down 3 nothing in the first period, you have a, a lot of things go the wrong way. Obviously, I mean, I'll key in on the on the Pelic situation for now. I mean, just a, a, a vicious, ruthless hit from, from Gallagher. Completely unnecessary. Away from the play, I mean, this just looked like a guy who who wanted to get a dirty hit on somebody. I mean, there's no there's no gray area in this. You know what I mean? There wasn't any situation where it was like, ah, he was trying to get out of the way, or ah, it was in the heat of the play. You know what I mean? Like, this is a guy who just consciously decided to take his elbow up right into Pelic's head, and it took him out of the game. And and I know. Uh, there was a lot of people upset that he didn't even have a, an in-person interview. I know Thomas Hickey was very vocal Kikai about it. Kikai Subban, his old teammate. Yeah. Again, when, when no one is siding with you. Yeah. And again, the fact that it wasn't... So if you like don't know, obviously, if it's an in-person hearing, the max could be whatever they really want it to be. There's no limit to how many games. But if it's an over-the-phone, the max is five games. The reason they did an over-the-phone is because he has no past incidents of suspension. Now, I talked about this with you, Sean, earlier today. And just... Being blunt here, if you kill somebody and go to jail, they don't say, well, you killed someone. He hasn't killed anybody before. It was the first time you killed someone. Again, like this hit. Right. And then you mix it in with, there was an injury. Pelic had a concussion. Last year missed 21 games. A second head injury in 14 months. He's going to be out. They're saying day to day. I doubt it. Um, I just think that it was so vicious and so intentional that the fact that he only got five games is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I think the argument that he hasn't gotten suspended before flies if it's more of a gray area yeah. kind of play where you could see where it might have been a little inadvertent or maybe it was one of those plays where if you know Pelix turns his back at the last second and it's up against the boards and he smashes him into the boards. It was nothing like or that. Gallagher's there's not even looking there's no gray collide. area here. Yeah. This is this guy had intent to, to harm this guy. I'm sure he didn't want to give Pelic a concussion, but, I mean, again, he could have just skated by him, no problem, even gave him a little bump in the shoulder, you know, no harm, no foul. But the fact that he just, you know, up and extended his elbow right into his noggin, I mean, that's, again, intense. So, yeah, you can say he's never done it before, but... You know, it was it was vicious and it wasn't inadvertent. So yeah, I mean, I'm kind of with the with the peanut gallery on this. I think I think uh, he should have gotten more than the five games. He should have gotten uh, you know an in person hearing. But but like just like you know uh, goalie interference <laughs> and calls like that, like NHL player safety is all over the place. It's so inconsistent. You don't know what constitutes a five game suspension, a ten game suspension from one incident to another. And they have these videos. They try to explain it to you, but it, at the end of the day, it still just seems like. There's something going on underneath there that we just aren't aware of where they choose, you know, X amount of games for this guy and X amount of games for that guy. And for me, it just never adds up. And, you know, I don't know what to make of it other than say that, you know, they did Pelic, they did the Islanders, and they did the league a disservice by only giving him five games. And what, again, he's been like a quote machine. And he said, it doesn't really matter what they gave Gallagher because it's not bringing Pelic back sooner. Right. And um, right. keep on. So let's get into this game. They go yes, down 3 nothing. Go down to 3 nothing early. Ton of mistakes. Penalties. Killed him. It starts with the Hudson fashion. Uh, delay game penalty. He had a really tough game. And then, of course, he gets hurt. Trying right. to score in a breakaway. Loses his balance after Sam Montebro kicked out the right pad. Goes into the boards. Leaves in the second period with, I think, 12.08 to play. 
And so the Islanders are down a forward for half the game. Mm -hmm. um, but the Islanders, again, resilient bunch. Right. Come back, come back. Late in that, well, first if you get Horvath goes on the board, a nice one-timer. Mm -hmm. um, you look back in two, and Horvath got robbed of his second goal of the game. Savard kicks out the skate and the stick. Right, Robbing right, him a right. wide open net. Uh, Matthew Barzal snipes later in the third period. Kyle Palmieri, after like 16 whacks, finally gets it to <laughs> yeah. fall there. He is right. hyped. I, I don't think I've ever seen Kyle Palmieri that hyped. And then Pierre Engvall, um, which he had made a mistake earlier in the game. Yep. We've talked about Engvall a lot. North-South, right? And I know you want to butt in here. I'll give I you do. one sec. <laughs> Engvall is best when he's going north. When right. Engvall decides to go south and not be, I'm not saying it's lazy, but make plays back in his own zone when he doesn't have to do it. He gets in trouble, which led to the Caulfield goal. I think that made it 2 nothing. He shuffles the puck, sauces it to Ajo. Ajo can't handle the pass. Caulfield goes right around Bolduc, who didn't even really try to hit him. Deeks Varlamov out of his shoes a little bit and tucks it home. So that's the first Engvall mistake. And then the second one, similar to the Matt Martin play against Nashville, where you know he has a chance to just get the puck out. He waits too long. Caulfield picks it up. They find Monaghan, one-timer. And with around two minutes left, the Islanders are chasing. Horvat hits the post with 10 seconds to go. The Islanders lose a game where they really should have won. Yeah, I think this was Pierre Engvall's worst game as a New York Islander, yep. to be honest with Especially you. Especially first game under Watt, coming back from injury, first Ex impression. Yeah, exactly. Like, it just it couldn't have been any worse for him. He had two plays where we've started to learn now, watching the Islanders, that that's kind of his kryptonite, is overhandling the puck. Yep. You know, where, he, like you said, if he comes back south, or if he just makes one extra move, you know, if he's thinking too much out there, it's getting him into trouble, and it's ending in bad results, where yeah. it's, it just seems like a goal against, or a really dangerous chance against. And this is a guy who just needs to simplify his game. He's got the speed. He's got the stick handling. And as we've we've defended him time and time again as far as being a cog on that second line, saying that he's a catalyst for them. Yeah. He's a guy who gets the puck into the zone. And he's he's helping Brock Nelson and Kyle Palmieri get their points on the board, right? Even if Engvall isn't. So he's got to simplify things. But the the killer for this game was it was just a domino effect. And it started with Hudson, Fa Hudson Fashing's mistake of putting the puck over the glass, right? And then it just kind of dominoed from there. Now, and I said this the other night in the uh, the post game yeah. where we did the, the space there, where it seems like that kind of just took the Islanders off the game for a little bit. They end up on the penalty kill. They can't kill it. Habs go up one nothing. It dominoes from there. They end up down 3 nothing, And it takes that for them to kind of reset and start the comeback. But it ends up being a little bit too late. Or, or was it in the sense that they did mount the comeback? But, you know, this is something that they could have avoided if A... Bashing maybe doesn't ship the puck over the boards, but the truth is they should have been able to kind of reset and and come back after that. But unfortunately, it didn't work out. But but look, they they get the five minute major late in the game, yep. and they tie the game. And you just can't you can't give up that game winner. And that's why it was just so backbreaking for Pierre Engvall after the mistake he had already made earlier in the game. And this is this is a. You know, you have a, a bunch of recent games here with these with these heartbreaking plays. You know, just rattling them off. Martin Clutterbuck, um, Engvall. you know, <laughs> Engvall, exactly. You know, you have these 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 incidents happen where you know you're losing point precious, which what are now precious points in the standings to just these mental errors where these guys are thinking too much, they're being too cute, they're trying to make an extra play. Where you know you know some people calling it lazy, but it's not because they're they're actually overthinking. Yep, and we they're, talked about that a lot. They're doing too yeah. much. You know, I mean, Engvall, he tried to take a step to the middle. He had that extra moment to just chip it up the boards. Matt Martin, he had that moment to chip it up the boards. He tries to force a pass to the middle. I mean, these are simple plays. Box, and means. you and you have to be aware, and these guys are, and they should be. You have to be aware of the circumstances too. A game on the road, tight game, whether you're within a goal, whether you're tied. You make the safe play. You don't have to go for, you know, the 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 risky breakout pass here to try to get that extra goal. Like, get it to overtime. You know what I mean? Unless it's a sure thing, chip the puck up the boards, play it safe. The clock probably runs out, and you make it to overtime. You go for that second point. And so for a team that's, as as Peter just pointed out, battling in the standings with a bunch of teams here, you got to be making the smart plays to collect those points, even if it's in a losing effort in overtime. Yeah, and Engvall play hurt for two reasons. One, Obviously put him out of position, but it also put Brock Nelson out of position. And we've talked about this. Again, if Engvall chips the puck off the boards, him and Nelson are probably on a two-on-one with, you know, enough time to, to score maybe a game winner there. And what happens is a lot of people are, you know, you know, looking at Nelson saying it was a lazy play not getting back to his guy, but mm -hmm. right, we're watching it in slow motion or not in the moment how fast it is that Nelson's mm -hmm. mindset when Engvall made the move that got picked off was breaking out. Right. Nelson he, he's, got confused. He's not expecting that puck to come back. Nel could have... 
Could Nelson have gotten back to disrupt Monahan, who was his guy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Could Romanov have handled the puck and instead of whiffing on it? It wasn't a great play. Well, it wasn't his fault. Yes. But if, if Romanov gets the puck mm -hmm. out, like Nelson was there and could have made the play. But Nelson's mindset was offense, up, got to get back, up the pucks here, and that and that's the game. And, mm -hmm. again, that was Engvall's first game under Wa. And I asked Wa before the game against Florida, mm -hmm. I said, you know, you talk about turnovers, He Wa wants puck possession. I said, so what's the balance? And he goes, and we started talking about Engvall, and he goes, he cut me off, and he said, Engvall's going to be fine. My job is to get Engvall back to the player performer that he was because when I got here, everyone told me that he was the best player, and I'm going to get him back there. And now let's go into the Florida game where Engvall does yes. make a mistake in this game as well. Uh, Sean, you can take it away. Yeah, I mean, this is another game. It's it's funny. All four of these games, they ended up playing from behind. They had to mount comebacks. Some successful, some not. And, you know, this is just another game where it's a tight game. Uh, they're playing Florida well for the most part. They're getting the shots. They're getting the opportunity. They're getting possession. And uh, it's just another game where it doesn't go their way uh, in overtime. But I give them credit for being resilient once again, getting the game to overtime. And, you know, you take the consolation, I guess, and getting a point out of a, a Stanley Cup finalist in the Florida Panthers. Yeah, Engvall takes a tripping penalty in this one. Uh, McLean takes a penalty that it comes back to bite them. Again, you're talking about, th I thought they played well against Florida. That's a very, everyone, you know, well, they got out shot heavily, things like that. Is That's a very good team. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a net front presence at all. And I actually went to the Florida locker room and was talking with their goalie there, Stolarz, and, and he was saying that, he was just saying that it was, they did such a good job in his defense, not allowing the honors to get to the front. And I asked why. I said, what do you think about your net front? And he said, credit the Panthers. I mean, this is why they're good. Right. They allow their goalies to see the puck. That means Stolarz allowed to control his rebounds. Again, like Peter said, he went back to Varlamov to get Sorokin more time off that he knows. Varlamov was outstanding. He was outstanding. Yeah. And again, you look at the goals, Reinhardt power play. He's he's been on he's right behind Matthews. He's but I think he's got 13 game point streak. Then they don't lift a stick and Kachuk deflects one in. Mm -hmm. But again, resilient again, Kyle Palmieri scoring back to back games with a huge he's been one of their best players since Waz got here. Twenty one shots through four games, two goals. There you go. He's been he's been the Palmieri right now. That we kind of look like when they get into the playoffs for his first year. He was really slow when they first got him at the deadline. But again, that's how they need Palmer to be. He's got a pep in his step. He's cutting to the net. He's trying to drive plays there, which is his bread and butter. And I, you like the resilient effort again to tie it late and you go to overtime. And again, I'm not blaming Nelson, but a very la you know one on one there, you probably don't want to shoot. Mm -hmm. um, he tries to go five on stars, which seemed to be the key. Mm -hmm. But instead of stopping in front of goal to get the whistle, Nelson skates behind the net and Stolarz. Very high IQ play. Let's the puck go. Mm -hmm. The honors get caught in a bad change, and Evan Rodriguez feeds Oliver Ekman Larson, who on the breakaway beats Farlamov. And you look at it and it says, that game could have been the same exact game that Dallas was. Maybe they weren't good enough to win that game or shouldn't have deserved to win it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they had Horvath had a breakaway in that game. There were yep. chances to win mm -hmm. that game, and against a really good Florida team, you mm -hmm. know, you need your top players to score. I'm not blaming them, but mm -hmm. again, that's a game where they weren't at their best and still could have won. But why after the game again? I love the progression, but we have to go on a run now if we want to make the playoffs. A hundred percent. And and also, you know, Nelson had that chance in overtime as well before I went back the other way for the goal against. But what's funny about that is as that play was developing, I was like, Nelson's gonna score here and they're gonna call it back because the puck hit the netting. So they didn't yeah, you go into that. On the on yeah. the other side, yeah. So I was actually I was at the game and I was sitting on that side of the ice by that netting, and you know, you see the puck rise up. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that hit the net. And then I, I hear and see people, you know, in the stands pointing and saying, hit the net, hit the netting. You know, and then it goes the other way. And I'm like, and I, I don't know how, how that works in overtime with the with the rules, like if they can call it back because of that. But I saw the Islanders going down. I was like, they're going to score here and they're going to call it back. Obviously, Nelson doesn't get the goal. And then Florida comes back. They get the goal. And I'm like, you know what? There's some hope here. Maybe this this goal gets called off yeah. because there was no stoppage in play ever since, you know, the puck went up and hit the netting, but it's just something they missed, and I guess it's not something they can call you, in overtime. You can't review it. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate, but that being yeah. said, it's not the reason the Islanders lost. And overtime, not. people will blame that for sure. Yeah. And, and again, tough week for them, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day is everyone, the Islanders want to make the playoffs, but Mar Matt Barzal said, and we'll get to Barzal a little bit later, but he said, whether things go right over these next 30 games or things go wrong, you know, mm -hmm. we're building a blueprint to win. Again, Waz not here an interim, he's not an interim head coach. Whatever they're right. building right now right. is going into next year because if it takes the whole rest of the season for them to, you know, master this system and they start next season, everyone feeling good, the players that Waz wants to be here in this system's here, the players that aren't going to fit his system aren't here. Like, you look at this as not a learning experience because, uh, of course, the Islanders want to make it and they certainly can, but this is this season's very valuable. That's why, you know, if the Islanders had waited to fire Lane going into the offseason, that's valuable time you missed 
to get a new coach in here to really preach what he wants. Um, yeah, again, they want to make it for sure. Mm -hmm. Wild, really, Wild might want to make it more than the players, the way he acts. Right. Um, so I think, though, like we said, once they figure it out, but they need to, again, because it's so, they have the luxury that it's so tight still. This was a bad week. They're in it. They yeah. absolutely are. There's there's no question about it. I, I and look, the sooner that they can clean up their mistakes, the better they have a chance and and I think this break kind of comes at a good time. Yep. You know, and we'll we'll get into what's on tap a little bit later, but I think this break is coming at a good time because yeah, the players are going to be going off, going away, you know, resting, going on vacation, but I think that's good. Get a little reset here, recalculate Come back under the new coach again. Maybe walk and you know do a little strategizing during, oh, that, during this week while he's looking thing. for a house. Yeah, because <laughs> he talked about that in the post game. But you know maybe this is a little reset for the team, like a, a more formal reset. Not only the coach coming in, but just like a break. It's almost like wash your hands of what came before with the the rough stuff with with Lane Lambert and the losses that were mounting there. Come back fresh after this All Star break and really go on a run again. It's promising that they gave these good teams like look Dallas, Florida, Vegas. Top teams in this league, right? And they were tight games against all three of them. They could they could have won all three of those games if certain things had gone their way, right? And hopefully they clean up the things that can make these games go their way and they go on a run here. But I think that'll do it for the recap. I'm going to tell everybody about our friends at Main Street Board Game Cafe. Then we're going to take a break. So, folks, Main Street Board Game Cafe in Huntington Village on Long Island's North Shore. Games for sale and for open play. Food and drink, beer and wine, fun and friends. Bring the magic of phones down, eyes up, tabletop board, board games to your family. Our staff will help you find the right game from old favorites to the hottest new releases we have everything from strategic to easy party games get off your screens for a night your family will remember looking for meetups to join our magic the gathering dungeons and dragons lorcana and organized play communities are welcoming for all we also do parties and corporate events located at 307 main street in huntington village go to main st board game cafe.com for more information main street board game cafe find your crowd unplug your game and with that, I want to thank you all for tuning in to twitch.tv slash hockey night NY and all your other favorite platforms. We're going to take a break. When we come back, what's on tap? Upcoming schedule. That's right, folks. It is time for What's on Tap, brought to you by A1 VIP Entertainment. And Stefan, for the New York Islanders, a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> a whole lot of nothing is on tap. They got a week off. We were just talking about it before, but the All Star game is coming. You got the draft on Thursday. You got the skills competition, which no Islander will be participating in on Friday. And then you have the game on Saturday. Stefan, are you jazzed up for All Star weekend? Oh, I can't wait. Um, it, it's going to be relaxing, hopefully, for the players. Like A guy like Noah Dobson needs this rest. I think it's a, definitely a blessing in disguise that he is not going. Sure. Maybe Lou said, you're not going. Wouldn't shock me. Um, so I think Same it's, with Ilya. I think Barzal, it's really good, though, because he always talks about, you know, he loves being around superstars. Because he says, I, you know, I want to be there because I want to be able like to be with them. That's, you know, he Crosby picking his head. I know Noah Dobson, maybe next year, but Noah Dobson trained with Crosby in the offseason. They have a close relationship. But I think for Barzal to go out there and, and be the star that he is, no no fastest skills uh, standard competition, which to me makes no sense, but it is what it is. But also, you know what happens during this break? Stadium series ships. The, the jersey ship for the players that are going to it. <laughs> um, not Barzal ones. You couldn't apparently I get that we still one. Gotta, yeah, we got to talk about that, huh? People uh, are... Uh... We're, we're talking about that in chat. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Still a lot of hate? Oh, big, big time. <laughs> big we'll, time. We'll get to it later. But uh, again, that's this is the shipping time. If you ordered it, this is what this week's for. These next week and a half is <laughs> right. they're getting shipped. But Can't, I think it's a great mental break for a lot of the players. 
Yes, and, and and again, we'll get into the jerseys, but just just that you mentioned the shipping, I just cannot <laughs> believe that this league can't get it together. Or at least I don't know if it's just the Islanders or all four teams. I didn't see, I don't know. but apparently jerseys aren't showing up until March. So you pre-order now, and you can't get it till a month after the game. So there's like four or five players you could order and no name that'll get here in time for the game. But uh-huh. Barzal is not one of those four players. What? <clears throat> Barzal me? is not. Yeah, I don't know. What uh, sense does that make? I don't make the rules, Sean. Stefan, I, sorry. Talk to somebody. I know I work for the league, but come on. <laughs> Jeez. Um, yeah, I don't all know. All right. Yeah, sorry. But all right. Anyway, we'll get off the jersey. So, yeah, I mean, look, not a whole lot on tap for the Islanders, but you know what? There is a lot on tap for A1 VIP Entertainment featured events tomorrow, January 29th, Madonna at MSG. Hit them up if you're looking for tickets. Also, Tuesday, January 30th, the Utah Jazz coming to town against the New York Knicks at MSG. Saturday, February 3rd, NHL All Star game. You're looking to fly out there, they'll get your tickets, they'll get your travel, they'll get your booking. Check them out. And Sunday, February 18th, the Islanders versus the Rangers Stadium Series. They got tickets for that as well. Hit them up. Call 516 787 0048. Mention Hockey Night in New York for 10%. Off of all of these events, one call does it all. And one more thing, A1 VIP Entertainment is also offering listeners and viewers of Hockey Night New York an Islanders playoff push package. Buy four games, get one free for home games at UBS Arena. Once again, call that number at 516-787-0048. One call does it all. That was well done. Thank you so much. Well, you know what? When I can actually read the words in front of me, it, it helps a lot. That, that's crazy. You know, reading comprehension, handwriting, it all it all ties together. You're reading adjectives and verbs. Adjectives, verbs, nouns, it's all there. It's all here, here for us. So there you go. That'll do it for What's on Tap. And uh, hey, Jake the Snake, you ready for a little uh, Jake's Takes or what? Go to the snake then? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it, buddy. I am. What do you got for us? Yeah, so I mean, you guys have gotten into this, but um, I know people may not be too happy results from this past week but we got to remember it's a new coach it takes time okay for everybody to gel together and i think we did see that a little bit that level of camarade uh camaraderie sure I'm trying to say that big word correctly. you got it you got it good a lot of syllables but uh yeah it, it takes time it takes time and then too you got to <laughs> takes off the cuff he's not reading <laughs> <laughs> they were uh they played some tough teams this week um other than montreal you know maybe a little bit of a lesser team out there but they put themselves against the wall pretty early there and they were resilient, like you guys talked about. So, yeah. Um, I actually, for my take here, I think that this team out of the break is going to be shot out of a cannon. Love and it, it. would not shock Love me it. for that run that Wa talks about to be right out of the All-Star break. Jake the Snake with the take. He just said they're going to go undefeated the rest of the year. That's what I heard. I did not say that. Do <laughs> I'm not here put for me it. <laughs> I'm here for We got to get you a theme song, buddy. But yeah. there you go. Jake's, Jake's take. We got to do the dodgeball yeah. thing. Yeah. It's the snake day <laughs> with Jake the Snake with Dodge. You got to do this and walk on like the, <laughs> the yes, dodgeball. The, uh, yes, that's right. The purple cobras. <laughs> yes. There you go. Yeah. There you go. We'll get you a uniform. Thank All you. right. So that's Jake's take. That'll do it for that. Why don't we go in to Hero of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, when you hear this song, that means it's time for the Hero of the Week brought to you by the Blue Line Deli and Bagels Half Price Hero, which this week is the Hockey Night in New York wrap, featuring grilled chicken, buffalo sauce, mozzarella cheese, and avocado in a wrap. It is delicious and obviously the best item on the menu because it's the Hockey Night in New York, Stefan. You can get that half off all week if you stop in to the Huntington location Blue Line Deli and Bagels, so hit us up, hit them up, check it out. So, Stefan Rosner, who is your hero? of the week. Yeah, my hero is Matthew Barzal because Matthew Barzal has become an absolute quote machine, but he's saying mm. all the right things again. Um, I have a couple of quotes here that I just wanted to read off that, again, I wasn't asking him to say certain things. Hey, just repeat this back. This is all him uh-huh. showing that leadership, but again, that accountability with Wah here. One, he loves Wah. It's, he goes, it's Patrick Wah, right? So You can I wanna, see a lot of excitement coming so out of So he out, said, yeah. just being blunt, a lot of laziness has crept in over the last little mm. while here. So he's not going to stand for that at all, and we love that. Um, he also said, just look at our game. Wins, losses are the, are a thing. But then on a daily basis, we're building a blueprint that is going to allow us to become champions. And again, actions speak louder than words. Yes. When you have your top player saying these things, again, doesn't wear an A, doesn't wear a C, but he's the face of the franchise, and Barzal is buying in completely to everything. That, that seeps into the rest of the group. And he's leading by example out there, maybe clean up some of the turnovers here or there in the offense zone penalties, but... Barzal loves every second of the Patrick Wah experience, and you could see him and Horvath and Lee really leading the way offensively. And again, it's just those are the guys are going to be here, right? Horvath and Barzal and Dobson. And there's, it's not a shock those three guys have been 
incredible under Wah, and that's a great start for them. And, and to see Barzal as outspoken, you're not like backhanding compliment what Lane did and everything like that, but mm-hmm. this newfound passion and accountability. That's the biggest thing, humility maybe, which was needed from this group that, hey, you know, they kept saying that we failed Lane, we failed Lane, but him calling out his teammates at times, like that's, this is a new Barzal in terms of what he's saying and how mm-hmm. he's approaching this. And I think, again, when you have your best player buying in, he's my hero because he's saying exactly what needs to be said out loud. We're giving out hero nominations for words. Well, they lost a lot of games this week. So. <laughs> it's all right. It's yeah. all right. I'm just busting your chops, I know. buddy. It's You're okay. Beating the horse dead? <laughs> That's for beating the horse dead. Yes, 100%. Not counting your roosters before they show up. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I cannot. Do all right, that. let's go on to my hero of the week. So, Bo Horvat is my guy. Easy here. Game-winning goal in overtime against the Dallas Stars. I want to give a, a runner-up to Patrick Waugh. Uh, I'm definitely... For what? <laughs> For, for, for the words. It's Patrick <laughs> For his words of inspiration. Yeah, no, listen, uh, I, I love the energy that he's brought to this team so far. Uh, I love that. It seems like the players are buying in. But like you said, I mean, it's one thing to talk the talk, but you got to walk the walk. So, I mean, this this honeymoon that we're in right now where everybody loves everybody, the players love Wah, Wah loves the players, that's only going to last so long if the results don't come, right? So I think like Jake the Snake said over there, this team has to come shot out of a cannon once this break is over. They got to start piling up points in the standings. It doesn't matter who they're playing, top of the league, bottom of the league. But if this is going to be a team that's going to compete late in this season in the playoffs, they got to beat just about everybody. I don't mean go undefeated the rest of the year, but you got to be able to hang. Right, like Jake proclaimed over there, right. But they got to be able to hang with these teams and at the very least take some points away, go on another nice long point streak, kind of like the one that they had with Lane, but maybe, you know, finish out a couple more of those games with some overtime winners. So uh, Bo Horvat is my hero of the week, runner up to Patrick Waugh. And once again, remember folks, stop on into the Blue Line Deli and Bagels Huntington location, mention Hockey Night in New York and get half off the Hockey Night in New York. Before yes. we get to oh, questions sh- brewing. Oh, yes. Tonight was the alumni, or today was the alumni classic. Yes. New York Islanders, yes. New York Rangers alumni. There was a new addition to the roster. I think you saw that Henrik Lundqvist put on the pad. So Thomas Hickey yeah. from the booth comes down, and we got to catch up with Thomas Hickey <laughs> before the game. And I asked Hickey, you know, about Wah, and this is what he had to say about the newest Islanders head coach. I, I think it's been impressive. Um, you know, I think you listen to, to him for what he sees to like, and he's talking about progression that they're making. Um, but it's the intensity that they're playing with in, in a determined group. And look, it's, it's professional hockey. You'd expect that, that that's the bare minimum, but reality is it's a long season, and you've got to push the right buttons. And I think for this group uh, to have someone to push them to that next level, I don't think you, you ever want to get to that point. But in my opinion, it, it looks like it's making a difference right now because uh, it, that determination and the speed that they're playing with it's, it's leading to changing the metrics uh that they've come out with earlier on in the season that weren't very good it's leading to more shots and less shots against um you know and i think it's going to be a work in progress yeah other thing from the uh classic is that johnny boyjuk could still let it rip yeah yeah um, radic martinek is putting people in blenders yeah, matt molson could still move there. and henrik lundquist is still molson had lundquist. a nice snipe over uh lundquist blocker actually so molson molson still got the shot yeah, it was a 6-4 loss for the Islanders alumni, but it was for charity, so it doesn't matter. But you know what? Yeah. Like, credit to the fans. They came out. It was a packed building. You had Ranger fans, Islander fans, all living in harmony together, supporting a good cause. There were, as far as I know, no fights in the stands, so that's a good thing. They you did know? in the parking lot, the packed Ma- parking that's, lot. That's possible. Parking was at a premium. You know, I got a ticket. No, you didn't. I did. I got a ticket. No, you didn't. I, I, I did. I'm, I'm telling you, I got a ticket. <laughs> you just said is, you didn't get a haircut, and I think you that... got a haircut. So. <laughs> well, a couple of weeks ago. You actually but... got a ticket? I got a ticket, buddy. Yeah, I didn't know where you parked. You said you parked. You might park where the players so, parked, to be honest. So this is, isn't going to do me any good because uh, now I'm putting it on a record. So when I go to plead not guilty, it's, it's not going to work out well for me. But, uh, yeah, so you know how, you know, you get a... I'm, in, I'm basically like three parking lots away from You're the Guam. building. Guam. Guam. Yes, correct. So, you know, I'm trying to get in there. I'm trying to rush in there to, to catch everything. And, um, you know, you know how you get to a lot... And all the spots are full, but you have that, like, end line on the end of the lane. You have that illegal park spot? Maybe. <laughs> you have the park where you're going to the, the like, get a ticket. Everybody else is doing it sort of thing. Like, oh, you got three cars over here doing it. There's one open right here. I'm like, you know what? You got these guys doing it. I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slip in there too, right? So after the game we leave, I go to my parking spot, and sure enough, there's this nice, wet, waterlogged yellow ticket on my windshield and I'm like this is outrageous because I look I'm like there's other cars here and I go look around and I was like that car doesn't have one that car doesn't have one. there was another one that had one I was like all right but this guy was just picking and choosing who was giving tickets to be fair your car sticks out like a sword what do you I mean think I, I think I got the expression <laughs> right right that was that expression right that was pretty good I mean I'm assuming you drove your orange Tesla 
It's the only car I drive. Yeah, that's, that sticks out. I mean, if I'm a cop going, which I'm picking that one. No it wasn't offense. even a cop. It was public safety. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. It was uh, right next to Safety Town, so it makes sense. Uh, oh, questions Jesus. brewing time, right? <laughs> right in? Yeah. in a moment. In a moment. Before we get into questions brewing, I want to tell you all about our friends at Isles Fix. Islanders Country, get your daily fix of Isles news, highlights, and analysis by subscribing to Isles Fix, the only Monday through Friday Islanders newsletter sent directly to your inbox. Sign up for free or become a paid subscriber for added benefits at islesfix.substack.com. Calm. So, why don't we take a quick break real quick, actually, Ed, if you could do me that favor, then we'll get into questions brewing, and we'll wrap this thing up. Sure. You gotta go pay for time for questions brewing so go ahead ask us a question yeah so go ahead ed <laughs> tell us about the questions how we doing over there how's how's your best pal jay he's what's, great what's going on he's great everyone's yeah. uh everyone was how's the chat looking uh, everybody involved they're talking about the jerseys what's going on everyone's involved i actually do want to start off with the jerseys before we move into more serious oh, subject please. matters you know uh so let's start off with this with uh from dtmr uh, do you spend three hundred dollars on the Stadium <laughs> Series jerseys, or wait two months way on when they are on the bargain rack? Well, I, I guess if you're a smart shopper, if you think they're going to be on the bargain rack, you wait for the bargain rack. Uh, I guess that's a cheeky way of asking whether or not maybe we think this jersey is nice or not. Perhaps um, I like it. I I thought uh, I saw that first promo commercial that everybody else saw and. You know, it didn't do the Islanders any favors, but I think once we saw the, the photographs and uh, we actually got a chance to check out the, the pro shop over at Northwell today, and I got to tell you, they look a lot better in person than they did in that promo video. Now, I know a lot of people still have a lot to say about the Isles, and this, by the way, isn't very important. It's just a jersey. But uh, I actually thought it looked really nice. Uh, I love the way the orange pops in the jersey. I think they're going to look awesome on the ice. We, we still got to see how the socks and the pants and the gloves look and all that. Helmet. But if, but the helmet, yes. But if they do all that right, I think they're going to look pretty nice. But, uh, you know, I guess I guess you'll have to wait and see them for yourselves. But, uh, look, $300 is expensive for a jersey no matter what it is, whether it's the Islanders jersey. Couldn't be me. Yeah, I mean. For anything. I, that's, that's a lot of money. So uh, Vote if, with if, your wallets. If you don't love it, exa vote with your wallets. If you don't love it, you don't have to buy it. That's the beauty of it. I will add one thing. I was told they are not selling them at MetLife. What is what is going on? No Barzal, no MetLife. How do you? No, no, no. They're not. There's no like traveling rack. To, you could yeah. probably How buy do you release a jersey for an event and not sell the jersey Wait, at the event. I got another expression for you. Don't shoot the messenger. No, I'm not <laughs> upset with you, Stefan. I'm just upset <laughs> with He's yelling at me. This just doesn't make sense. <laughs> it defies all logic and rationale. At least they, they're keeping it consistent. Player says he doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Like just the the whole thing with this these jerseys. Now I looked I looked this up, and apparently this is the thing that they've been doing. Like they've been releasing the jerseys very close to when the game actually happens, like two three weeks prior. Like this isn't a first. They've done this before. Now why they do that is beyond me. I guess to build up the hype for the game leading up to it. But like you got Christmas. These things would have flown off the shelves, whether it was Islander ones or Ranger ones or Flyer ones. Like, why aren't these pushed during the Christmas season, right? Because they'll make plenty of bank off of that, right? That's an easy gift for your hockey fans out there. And then they you have waiting. the event. Lou is waiting for Wada to show up. No, but it's, as I'll let you know, it's not even a team decision. It's the, the league. It, sure. The teams had no say. But then say you have this, the yeah. event, and you're not even selling them at the event they're for? <laughs> anyway. It's not a serious thing. It's just jerseys. <laughs> That's a fair point. Yeah. But like also, like it's just it's so stupid. It's yeah. so stupid. All right, there you go. See, I didn't expect to see. I don't get worked answer. up about I, the team I, on the ice. Now I, I want to talk about, about more serious subject matters. <laughs> right. now, Is there anything uh, more serious than this? I don't know. 
<laughs> All right. Blood pressure. Moving on. Uh, we touched a lot about, you know, the hit before, and a mm-hmm. lot of people brought up their concerns that we already touched upon, but uh, an interesting take here from NZAB09. What do you got? Are the more serious hits now an issue that has come around because they have diminished fighting in the NHL? Players are not allowed to self-correct those kinds of issues. Look at how Gretzky was protected and then how Crosby wasn't because fighting was taken out for the most part. Yeah, I, this still is a terrible hit that even if fighting was allowed, Gallagher gets jumped. But Gallagher kind of went right to the... Like, he goes like this, what? And goes right to the box. I mean, someone could have <laughs> stepped in the What did I do? <laughs> but I don't... I don't. Maybe? I, I think the problem is now is that players that don't have a history could say... Well, if I just cross someone at center ice, I'm only getting mm-hmm. five games anyway. So I might as well do it if I take him out for the season. Like, it's messed up. The, it's It's been taken out of the players' hands a lot. It started with the instigator years ago, but now you have those rules, right, where if you get into a fight with five minutes left or something like that, you get thrown out. I don't remember the rule exactly, but basically they've 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 made, they've made taken more steps to curtail the, the shenanigans where you get brawls and where you get guys going after each other. But... You know, a byproduct of that, as as Enza brings up here, is that you have players like whether Gallagher did it himself or not, yeah. but you have players that take more liberties now because they know they don't have to answer the bell. You know, where they know that you know the the other team is taking a risk. You know, getting an instigator penalty. You know, whether it's a, a minor, double minor, or a major, and and it's not. It's definitely like however things are set up now. It's not a perfect science. That's for sure. Like there's definitely corrections that need to be made. I don't know what the answer is. But it's it's there's definitely an issue here where fighting is down, guys aren't you know being policed as much, so they're they're willing to make these dangerous hits, and 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 then you get guys getting hurt and and you know getting their their lives messed up if they if they end up getting you know terrible concussions and injuries, you know. I mean, look at Philip Edel today, um, with the New York Rangers. He had yeah. a concussion, comes back, suffers post concussion. What they thought was out of practice, and he's out for the season now. Now it's not even about hockey at this point. About the guy's life, but I exactly. just want to say April 11th, circle that date. That's the third to last game of the season. Excuse me, fourth to last game of the season. The Islanders welcome in the Montreal Canadiens. Yes, and, and Gallagher will be well done with his suspension by then. Yeah, and if he is on the ice, that's that's the thing now is now he's going to get mm-hmm. hit, slashed every whistle, cross check. Well, if the Islanders yeah. are in a tight battle for a playoff spot, they might let him go because they can't yeah, take costly penalties. I forgot that he was still in this league, to be quite honest, Gallagher. <laughs> I mean... He's the, we, someone's got to study the fall from him because he was a pesty guy like Brad Marchand, mm-hmm. but he's also a talented guy. I have to say, wins. I was actually surprised that was his first suspension because I knew he always had a knack for kind of getting under guys' yeah. skin and being a little chippy out there. So I was actually surprised to find out that was his first. But but yeah, I don't I don't know what the answer is, but Enzeb, I think you bring up a good point. Uh, it's definitely not a perfect science. Hopefully, uh, some smart guy out there, or some ga- smart gal out there, will figure this out for us. Next. Uh, while we're on that subject, uh, Isle72 asks, any idea how bad Pellick's injury is? With his concussion history, praying wasn't as bad as it looked. Um, it probably was as bad as it looked, just because of, mm. again, last injury last year was Bortuzzo, and now his current teammate goes into the boards hard. But, again, the head wasn't completely the main point, just, like, directly in the head. I mean, this was a shot. You, you saw the way Pellick looked like he got clotheslined. I mean, Pellick's a huge guy. The fact that yep. Pellet got crossed, he gets up. Right. When you watch him walk off, when he gets off the ice, you're like, oh, okay, he got up on his own his power, he's skating, but then he gets on to the, uh, the walkway down the tunnel, and he just looks really off. They're listing him as day-to-day, but we've seen that become week-to-week and month-to-month. And right. again, they are not going to rush this guy back. He missed 21 games last year. He missed over 20 this year with an upper body and a lower body. Again, you just have to hope he's okay person-wise, because this could mess right. you up for a while. Yeah, we've had a couple of things happen with him here. And I guess while you're on the subject, no updates, I'm assuming, on Sezikas or Pulak. So I came out of the locker room, and Pulak was at the top of the stairs and said, hey, guys, he's wearing shorts. He was coming out of the gym of a workout, no boot, okay. nothing. And we are asking him, like, you feel good? He goes, yeah, I'm hoping to be back soon. So I'm not saying after the All-Star break, but he looked really good. Like, he no okay. ailments or anything Soon like that nice. walking. Um, and again, they can they re, especially with Pelic out and with what Pulak did in the playoffs last year, maybe he wasn't his best this year, but he's gone from being that offensive guy to like legitimately a shutdown defenseman type of defenseman when he's right. on his game. Mm-hmm. And with the injury to Pelic now and the shakiness on the the bottom pairing, mm-hmm. Pulak back after the break would be huge for this team. Agreed, Ed. What do you got? Next up from Luigi Main. What uh, up, Luigi? Luigi Main. Does Lou make a panic trade before uh, we come back? From the All Star Game, or wait until the deadline. Zagra, uh, I believe how that's pronounced. Why? Oh, Zig- what? Zagra. Oh, Zegras. Is it Zegras? I don't think uh, it's, in, it's in Lou Lamarillo's DNA to make a panic move. 
does he make a move where he just sees a need and and tries to fill a hole like like Stefan just brought up on the defense, you know, with these injuries, if if Pelic's out for a while, if Pollock isn't coming back soon, that I mean, we talked about needing defense before Pelic even went down. We were saying if they were going to make a, a move at the deadline, D was probably the way to go here. Maybe this bumps it up uh, a little sooner than the deadline if if a deal is there to be had, but. Um, Lou Lamarillo panic, that just doesn't happen. And it wouldn't be for Zigra. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did, did they not put the S there? Or you just made no, it French Canadian? Yeah, I, you know, it was too, it's too close to zebras for it to be like, <laughs> it's just one letter off from being zebras. I was like, it's not zebras, is it? I was See? like, there's no way. It's hard it's to read like, sometimes. I'm thinking I, it's like, hard to read sometimes. You know, I was like, I took a shot in the dark. I was like, it can't be zebras, basically. So I wish you at, said zebras. You look at Waz, yeah, I, and Waz talking about limiting the turnovers and playing that strong defensive game. Trevor Zegers is a very talented player. We've mm-hmm. seen him do some incredibly talented things. Yeah. He is not the player for this system. Would he be amazing to see Zegers alongside Barzal and Horvat? Sure. But I don't think Zegers is the guy that would ever fit into the system. Uh, maybe yeah. more of like a Doug Waite system. I'm not even, that's not even a knock. Just right. offense only right, for right. Zegers. I truly think if Pelik's not back or Pulak's not back, you got to go get a defender. Uh, obviously, you could use the LTIR money if Pelek and Pulak are both. I don't think Pulak's out long-term now in terms of the season because we're seeing him out and about. Pelek, maybe use that LTIR money, go get a guy like Hannafin because you could don't need to be under the cap in the playoffs. Um, or I like Tanev, too, on the Flames. Okay. Plays like Mayfield, but again, shut down defender, big body, block shots. That's what I feel like he fits the system perfectly. But again, like you said, Lou never panics. He does not. Edward. Uh- Go back to Ed Zev really quick. Okay. Uh, now that we've seen what Wa can do, are there any other coaches we can get? <laughs> what? <laughs> Just kidding. What? Are, <laughs> I, I love that. that I forgot What's about the that. What's here? What do you got? What are the realistic goals for this team? Just make the playoffs, win a round? Well, if they're making the playoffs in this system, which that probably means they go on a run. And if they could play this way in the playoffs, it always come down to those timely goals, right? Which is what killed them under trots late in those series. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I don't think just making the play, like Watt doesn't just want to make the playoffs. No one ever just wants to make. I don't think there's any player. Maybe fans are like that. There's no player that says, "Oh, we made it to the playoffs. Let's now just it is what it is." But for the Islanders, they're going to go in as underdogs that they always do, and they're going to be very tough to play against. That I wouldn't be surprised they do make it into the playoffs. That they go on a run, and again, when you have great goaltending, and if the the offense really continues to find ways to score and, and turns up. This is a team that can compete against. We saw it before when they weren't even playing well. They were competing with every team in this league. So this would be a team that makes the playoffs. And I think if they go on that run to make it, they're going to go on a deep run. They're they're just there's too much talent when if they're going right, especially the way Wa wants to play, it's going to be very hard to beat this team. Yeah, and and as you said earlier, Stefan, you know this is a long term hire in the yep. sense that it's not just for this season. It's a long term thing to establish a system with this team, a relationship with this team with Patrick Wa, and hopefully you know, maybe get another, you know, Barry Trotz-esque sort of run in the sense that you have a collection of years where they're making the playoffs and they're making noise in the playoffs. I mean, hopefully you're getting into the deeper rounds and whatnot. I mean, Patrick, you don't hire Patrick Waugh just for a one-off thing here. I mean, the immediate goal, for sure. He was absolutely hired to to salvage this season, to turn this season around. And that just goes with, you know, everything surrounding the franchise, you know, fans, management, finances you know they they can't have another another season here after the building just open and not making the playoffs here i mean this is this is something they, they got to get into the playoffs just for reasons like that but yeah big picture you know he's got to get these guys going the way they need to be going here after this break hopefully get themselves into the playoffs and maybe make some noise because i agree with Stefan. this is a team if if patrick wah can get them playing where we know a vast majority of the players on this roster can play then they can hang with most teams in this league, and you never know what can happen in a seven-game series. So, yeah, the ultimate goal here is to play off some beyond, for sure. And I'm very curious to see what how they play with a lead. I don't think they're going to play shell hockey like Trotz did because he's talked about how aggressive he wants them to play, and he wants the defense to move around and not be in the low slot. And that second quick, like we spoke about, mm-hmm. the term where it's that second guy coming in for that aggressive pinch. I'm very curious to see what they play with the lead because that's going to tell me a lot about if they do get to the playoffs. How good they really could be. You can still play smart and go for the kill. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't have to just be get to the red line, dump the puck, and cross your fingers that they don't come in and score, right? Yeah. Like, you can you can still go for that next goal, that two-goal lead goal, three-goal lead goal, when you're hanging on to something in the third period. But it's all about mental mental stability. It's about all about confidence. Yeah, I mean, this is they have to be in the right mode. And they have to, first, they have to get comfortable 
with the lead mm-hmm. in the third period because clearly under Lambert they were not. I mean, it was nope. just a disaster, if not all nights, most nights for certain. So Patrick Waugh has got to figure out a way to get these guys thinking like they can hold on to and build on a lead in the third period. And hopefully that's something we see because they didn't have too many leads this past week, right? We need to see a, a Patrick Waugh-led team with a lead, really, so we can see how that goes. Uh, so good question, Ed. What do you got? Uh, next up's not a question, but I just want to shout out uh, Julian Plenty here over on YouTube, who says Habs fan here. Hey, with Wa joining the team now, Islanders are my second favorite team. He's a legend. Go Isles, go! We got to turn it around and make the playoffs. Love to see it. Thanks for tuning in. That's great stuff. Yeah. Love that. All, All right. right. And then uh, we'll move on to Team Boyle, Mr. Tom Boyle. Hold Will on, hold be- on, hold on. What? what? No go. What, what happened? <laughs> no, I just want to get ready. I know he's gonna. Laugh. He did. Oh, no, this is this is a uh, well. What do you got, is, T-Boyle? It's, it's, it's nothing crazy. Okay. Will we be doing a show next week? Yeah. <laughs> we don't take off. We're talking hockey. We're not talking <laughs> we're, about we're, practice. We're, we're there just won't hockey. be a uh, recap event. Oh, the All-Star break. The All-Star yeah, game. we're going to we're gonna talk about this. <laughs> we're probably not, but <laughs> we'll have plenty to talk about. Don't worry. We got a show coming up Sunday. We'll be here. Good question. Next up, Phlebotinum 1. Why is Stefan such a megastar that I couldn't get a chance to say hi at the alumni? Wow. Is, is Who did that, you pay to, to chime in on the chat here for that one? Mom, go away. <laughs> <laughs> which which friend of yours? Well, one, I really do appreciate that. I am not a megastar. Two, you could have just come up and, and said hi. I It means a lot, but I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, that, that means a lot. I'm actually lost for words here. Wow, That's Stefan, good. you're a megastar. I guess I just charge you to have me on the show now. Thanks, man. Yeah, appreciate well, it. I'm gonna well make... that'll do it for <laughs> Hockey Night in New York. Forever. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. I appreciate that. That means a lot. Um, Thank you. And we're going to go back to one more from Tom Boyle. We're going to go back towards the... Uh, all, right, all right, well, it, it, again, it's it's not a rib on anyone. It's nothing crazy. Okay. I mean, All right, what do we got? Um, is the NHL waiting for someone to get killed before they call these penalties assaults? You're skating at high speed and leaving your feet and elbowing a defenseless player in the head. Ridiculous. Uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of a... That doesn't. You really cross happen. a line with the assault because then you could say a fight's assault. Well, the first time we really saw that happen was what happened out in the UK. I was going to bring that up overseas, and mm-hmm. you know, I mean, this is a guy who I don't even. I haven't even followed up on that. I'm curious where that he whole got thing arrested. is. I don't know what like okay. the legal. I mean, getting arrested doesn't mean you're going because, to jail. But well, look, that is because this that guy appeared to have used what essentially was a deadly weapon at. You know this guy's throat. Now whether you know, I, yeah, I don't know what the case is, whether yeah. it was intentional or not. But I mean, it looked bad to me, and you know, I think it's good in a, that the authorities got involved with that, right? Because that was just next level stuff. As far as you know, and I guess this this question stems from what happened to Adam Pellick. I mean, look, these are not that it's justified, not that these are things that should happen, but this this is stuff that happens within the heat of a hockey game, and when it comes to stuff like that. The players know what they're signing up for. Again, that doesn't excuse these hits. I mean, that's that's why we were just railing about why that should have been a longer suspension. I mean, that's the stuff that needs to be weeded out of the game, but the truth of the matter is it probably never will. There's never going to be a punishment harsh enough probably to stop a guy. I mean, you can go over years past, right? You got the Matt Cooks of the world, and yep. you know, there are plenty of guys out there that... You just knew that they were out there to do more than just play hockey, right? And and hopefully as time goes by, you know, those players are weeded out and they become fewer and further between. But there is a fine line between getting authorities involved because, look, this is the nature of hockey in the sense that it's a physical sport. It's a fast sport. This stuff is going to happen out there. And, you know, I think you, in, in most cases you stop short of that. But then when you have an extreme case uh, like what happened in the U.K., that's when you see that stuff. But an uh, interesting question. Well, T-Ball, to, your, to Sean's point there, if this was a soccer game, and someone does that, to me, that's assault because that's not part of the game of soccer, elbowing somebody in the face. Like, if that happened in a game where a guy just comes by and, like, happens again, all the time, going up for headers and stuff no, like but that, you know? The ball is cleared away and some guy goes up to another guy and finishes with an elbow. I mean, that's much different. But in hockey, like yeah. you said, this is mm-hmm. it's a physical game, it's a fast game. But it's inexcusable. With sports, but, it's like it's kind of like they're they're protected by this dome of their own rules. Yep. You know what I mean? Like they, it's almost like the waiver signed. You know what I mean? And it, and you're kind of within what happens on the field or what on the ice is what happens on the field yeah. or on the ice, unless it's just to the extreme. If hitting was illegal, this would be much different. Correct. Uh, we're moving on to Trottier nineteen. Now I don't want to bring up questions like this because just to preface, we've we've had Lane's head on a pike in chat. Why well, did he get fired? He's, He's gone. gone now. But questions like this: How soon does the honeymoon with Wa end if the results stay the same? 
He's not getting fired anytime soon. No, no he's not getting fired. It's that ride be- or die until the end here. To, end of the season anyway. To me, if it does fail, it's on the players, not Wa, because again, Wa's here. They are, they are, I truly believe that after the season ends, whatever, the pieces that haven't bought into Wa's system will not be here. Um, again, you're not trading eight people on this team. I don't think they'll need to do that. But, you know, if the fourth line, Clutterbuck and Martin retire, or some guy like is not really buying in, a la a guy like Wall Street, like they mm-hmm. won't be here. So I think that once the honeymoon phase ends, it's going to be up to the players to either buy in or not. And if Wa is here next year, if the players that don't buy in, they're not going to play. That's how it's going to work. So I think the honeymoon phase is never going to impact Wa. Now, again, if they lose out the entire year and they start next year 0-30 or 0-15, then yeah, whoever is the GM is going to make a change. One, I don't see that happening, but I think the onus is completely on the players because the effort's there, but the turnovers and stuff like that's causing losses right now, and if that continues, that's not on Wa. The turnovers are on the players. Again, you can't trade the entire team. It's easier to fire a coach. But I think Lou is going to do everything he possibly can to give Wild the team he needs. Yeah, and, and just to just to wrap up that thought, I think we still need to give it more than four games oh, just to course. see where Patrick Wah is taking this team systematically. So far, it looks good. We said a lot of things look promising. We'll see if that continues. But uh, the honeymoon is going to continue, at least for now. If they uh, come back from this break and start a little losing streak, then maybe you start worrying about it. But either way, Patrick Wah is not losing his job. Yeah. But I think we're going to have to wrap there because we have gone a little bit late here. So thank you for getting your questions in. If we did not get to yours, we will try to get to it next week. So Ed, Q, the music. I want to send a big thanks to all of you for tuning in here on twitch.tv slash hockey on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate the chats. Thank you so much. I want to send a big thanks to our sponsors, starting with Blue Line Deli and Bagel 719, West Jericho Turnpike and Huntington's Where to Stop, or 217 Carlton Avenue in East Islip. Check out the menu at bluelinedeli.com. Also, a big thanks to Main Street Board Game Cafe, located at 307 Main Street in Huntington Village. Find out how to unplug your game at mainstboardgamecafe.com. Also, a big thanks to Razor and Kniff, attorneys at law. Nobody likes going to court, but if you have to, call 516-742-7600 for a free consultation. Also, big thanks to A1 VIP Entertainment, your one-stop entertainment concierge for sports, concerts, Broadway, and more. One call does it all at 516-787-0048. Of course, I want to send also a big thanks to Peter Bois of The Athletic for joining us. Great spot from him. Stefan Rosner, where can we find you on social media and the interwebs? Megastar, Stefan oh, Rosner. Oh, Christ. Nah, it's gone to my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, this is a um, problem. A, uh, this Stefan is a problem. underscore Rosner, S-T-E-F-E-N underscore R-O-S-N-E-R, the Hockey News, Islanders, Rangers, and NHL.com. You can follow Average Sean Cuthbert at Shawnee Hockey on Twitter. You can follow the show at Hockey Night on NY, <laughs> Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and all the social media spaces. Folks, if you enjoy what we're doing here, please rate, review, subscribe on your favorite platforms, whether that's on the podcast, whether that's on YouTube, here at Twitch. Uh, Definitely appreciate the support there. If you have some time to give us a review, that helps us out a lot too, so we really appreciate it. And with that, we'll be back next week. So for Stefan, for Jake, for Ed, for, for Jay taking a nap over there, I'm Sean Cuthbert. We've been Hockey Night in New York. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week.